And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I want to talk to you about a game called Spyfall. Spyfall is a game from Hobby World, and recently I talked about a game from Hobby World that I really enjoy, Viceroy, a great game. So, you know, I was kind of also excited about this one, uh, Spyfall. I heard about this one at Essen, I heard that it was really good, so I was very anxious to try it out, and I played it a few times since then. Let's find out if it's any good or not. Inside the box, we have a whole bunch of cards, packets. They're in plastic bags, but the plastic bags are kind of small, so I sleeved all my cards and abandoned them. But all these cards, you're going to mix them up in a box and you're going to pull one set out. Now, what you, each set has a spy card, and we don't know what the other cards are in this set, so we know we're going to use a spy card in the game, so we can take that one and put it out, and then we take out cards for the other players in the game. So let's say it's a five-player game, we do four more cards, we take these cards, we shuffle them all together, each player draws one, and we look. Okay, we're at the service station. That's the location. Everybody has a service station card, except the spy. Now, people with the service station might tell you who you are. Here, I'm the service technician, the electrical technician, the manager, etc. You can use these roles or not. I found that they work sometimes. They work better in a, a smaller player game. In a bigger player game, they can be confusing. There are a lot of different locations depending on what deck you bring out. You know, there's an airplane, bank, beach, circus tent, corporate party, crusader army, casino, ocean liner, service station, um, university, theater, supermarket, etc. So there's all these different locations. And so you put this in the middle of the table to show the possible locations. One player goes first, an eight minute timer is started, and that player is gonna start asking, ask any other player questions. So I can ask, Bob a question and say something like, why are you here today? And Bob will say, oh, I didn't want to be here, but circumstances forced me to be here. Bob can then ask anybody else a question except for the person who asked him the question. So he might ask Sam a question. Sam might ask me a question next, but then I can ask anyone a question except Sam, etc. Now, what you're trying to do is you're trying to trip up the spy. See, the spy doesn't know where they are. They're listening to what everybody else is saying. So you can't be obvious. I can't say, why are you here today? And you say, I'm here to fix the car. I mean, you can ask all sorts of things, you know. Um, well, we were playing one time on a pirate ship and someone said, are you ready to go? And I said, first word. That was my answer. And so he knew that it was a pirate ship because his first word was "r," And the spy had no idea what we were talking about. The spy is answering and asking questions, trying to look smart, but the spy is trying to figure out where they are from listening to everybody else. If the spy figures out where they are, he can stop the game at any point and say, hey, we're at the service station. And if he's correct, the spy will get two points. If he's incorrect, then the players win. The players can stop the game at any point to say, hey, Bob's the spy. It has to be unanimous, but if everybody agrees at that point, then we reveal Bob. If he's not the spy, then the spy gets points. If he is the spy, then players get points. You can only accuse somebody once. And in the middle of an accusation, the spy can't quickly say, well, before anyone says anything, I know we're at the school. No, it's too late. Also, at the end of eight minutes, if no one has figured anything out, then everybody must, as a group, unanimously pick somebody, except for obviously the descent of that person, and if they're right, then they win and get a point, otherwise the spy wins and gets points. Then you take these, plus the cards you didn't use, put them back together. I always put the spy card on top so you can't see what's in the deck, shuffle it back in the box, draw another one and keep going. To a certain number of points, or if you play like we do, each one of these is basically a game in of itself. Playing it a few times is a bit of an understatement. I've played this game probably 30 times since then. I love Spyfall. It is so much fun. Now, just like other party games, Telestrations, etc., we threw out the point system. The point system's, eh, yeah, I, 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 you know, it is what it is. But playing the game just as one game at a time, pulling it out, Oh, who won? The spy won or everybody else won? Like, simple games of coup or resistance. It is so much fun. And it gets, the game changes dramatically. With four players, you are like, oh, I'm a spy. It's really hard to win as a spy. And that's fine going and you know that, but it's possible. I've seen it happen many times. With eight players, it's really hard to catch the spy, to figure it out. But you can toss around the questions and you could even play with an extra spy card. Uh, with eight players. That's not in the rules, but uh, Dan King talked to the designers about it, 
and they and they threw that there. It's interesting. Or you can make people play with their roles um, in, a, in a smaller player game, which makes it a little easier for the spy. Wow, it's entertaining to go back and forth. There is one caveat. I really wish there had been some sort of reference card for each player because having this in the middle of the table, you know, when you're trying to figure out where you are, the spy wants to look at it, but at the same time, they don't want to be really obvious about it. I recommend you push this in front of whoever is asking the question. So whoever is asking the question at any given point, they can have this in front of them and they can look at it and that, I mean, you can still accuse them of being the spy, but there's a chance that, that at least they can like try to figure out where they are. Wow, every time I play this, it's hilarious. The questions that are asked. Sometimes a question is asked, an answer given, and they're both so ludicrous. And you think, well, that question didn't make any sense. So that person must be the spy, but the answer made even less sense. So they can't be the spy either. Or sometimes someone gives an answer that's so hilarious, funny, that they have to be the spy. You're at the beach, and I say, what are you wearing? And you say, oh, three-piece suit. Okay, you've got to be the spy then. It just really that you're trying to think of these really clever questions to get information that tells you so you like have this inside joke yeah we're in this place and the spy doesn't know it thematically it makes no sense how can the spy not know where they are but who cares this is folks one of the best party games of the year it's one of the best games of the year i love it and it has worked for me with every combination of players highly recommend this game it's a little hard to find, but you should be able to get it eventually. It will come to America um, uh, by fall. Just spectacular. Dice Tower Judgment into my collection. Spectacular. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Okay. <laughs>